Hi guys and welcome back to Pass and Move. And for today's episode, we're still in Italy in Serie A, but we are back with Inter. Uh, Inter Milan, of course, very famous team. Uh, what used to be, I guess, uh, one of the top teams in Italy, although they're doing quite well uh, recently in real life too. Um, now, of course, as you can tell, we haven't done anything just yet. I'm going to be going through uh, everything with you in this tactical and team guide. Uh, you know, I never prepare these things, not for the sake of, you know, uh, not being prepared, but it's, the whole point is to show you how to set up your team as um, soon as you as soon as you start your, your club career, I guess. Um, and just showing you how I, uh, how I do things from start, uh, uh, how I set everything up. I was going to say start to finish, but it's not really to finish. But um, yeah, just, you know, tactics, team guides, who to sell, who to keep and whatnot. Uh, so let's get into it. So, of course, one of the things to consider is your assistant manager's recommendation of a formation. So he thinks we should be playing a 5-3-2, uh, a sweeper included. And we'll have a look at just the, at the team and see uh, whether he's, uh, you know, insane or correct. It really depends. Sometimes the assistant manager has some strange uh, suggestions. Sometimes he's spot on. Uh, and uh, occasionally uh, it has something to do with their tactical preference. So you, as you can see here, that's why he's suggesting it. Both his preferred formation and second preferred formation is the 5-3-2 sweeper wing, with wing backs included. Now, uh, the reason why I brought out the staff is, um, you, you know, uh, everyone has their own little preferences for staff, but um, I'm not really going to evaluate them, but I will point out that you have way too many fitness coaches, I think. You have a limited number of coaches, and to have that many fitness coaches means that you're not really taking care of other things. But the reason why I brought the staff screen is actually to see who is the best judgment of ability. Now, you've got an incredible head of youth in Roberto Samadan. Uh, great judgment of ability and potential, so we'll be trusting his judgment when dealing with the players. So if we have a look at the reports of these players, this is actually the assistant manager's uh, viewings. But of course, whenever we click on it, uh, any of the players will actually have a look at what Roberto uh, Samadon thinks. I think he's one of the best head of youth uh, developments in the game, uh, really. And uh, fair credit to Inter Milan. So it looks like some of these players don't really deserve to be here. But we'll have a look at the under 20s and under 18s to see if anyone from there should be promoted to the first team. Now you've got a couple of older players over here. You know, they're out of the age range, I guess you could say. All the way down to about here, 21. Um, so it looks like you could do with selling some of these players when they get back. But of course, that's up to you. Well, I'm not really going to discuss that with dealing with the players who are actually here at the club. Uh, if we sort out inability though, uh, by ability, not inability, and uh, it looks like Yale, is he ready? He, nope, he's still just Serie A ability, so he's not ready yet either. And it looks like since he's the highest rated ability wise, it doesn't seem like there's anyone else. So it looks like you're just going to have to deal with the squad as is here. Uh, we'll have a look at some of the players here. So uh, Bernie, definitely just Serie C, so not ready at all. We're moving to the under 20s just to get him out of our uh, you know team here at least. And, uh, you know, you should try and sell him, basically. Here's Aloni in Trent Sainsbury. He should be sponsored if he's not. Apparently, he can still improve by a slight amount, but that would only make him a decent Serie R player, and that's not good, good enough for our type of uh, team that we're trying to build here. Um, and uh, apparently, we're not paying him any wages at all. Seems weird to bring him in. Maybe it's a numbers game. But just for the sake of it, again, send them to the under-20s. Uh, finally, we're getting some decent players for the Serie A in terms of ability. A couple of good ones. Um, and yeah, that's the f one of the first things I do is just get rid of anyone in the first team who's not ready to be in the first team. And the, the judgment there is to see whether they have Serie A ability or not. Now, um, it looks like you've got a couple of fullbacks, a couple of centre-backs, a couple of central midfielders, right-wingers, left-wingers, one advanced playmaker and a striker. So it looks like we're kind of set out for a 4-3-3, uh, you know, defensive midfielder included type of thing. Um, it would be nice to use Joe Mario in his preferred position, but he's the only advanced playmaker. But yeah, uh, how I do things is sort out by ability and try and make a squad 
out of your best 11. Now, that's why I was talking about Jay Mario, one of the best players at Inter Milan. Unfortunately, though, there's just no one who really plays as a backup to him. Uh, Perisic could play there, though, but not comfortable as an advanced playmaker. But um, my guess is if we're playing a 4-3-3, we would be playing possession based because that's what the formation suits. We've got an advanced forward in Icardi, but my guess is he can play a complete forward as well. Um, he's missing in a couple of attributes such as vision and teamwork, but generally everything else he's got probably best as an advanced forward. But again, if we're playing a lonesome striker role, we do need someone on a support role. And unfortunately, advanced forward doesn't come with that uh, duty. So. For a striker, advanced playmaker who probably plays a centre midfielder if we retrain him. Handovic is a goalkeeper, even Perisic is as inside forward on the left is his best role. He probably plays a winger as well over on this side here. He could do the job, but definitely best as an inside forward. Um, we've got box to box midfielder in Brozovic. And let's see what else we've got. Advanced playmaker and Ever Benega if we need it. Oh, he can play as an advanced playmaker. So a couple of things we can consider. We're going to try and make a formation uh, two tactics actually. Uh, one with a um, you know leaning towards possession based sides and one leaning towards um, a direct style of play. So let's just set up the 4-3-3 here. And I think you've got options, two options for the possession base side. And I'll say that's the 4-3-3 and the 4-2-3-1. And so we're gonna this episode might be a little long because we will be doing a couple of formations. Now what should we do to play direct? I think our best bet to play direct is the 4-1-4-1. So let's do that. Ooh. The 4141. I think that's probably your best, but it's, it is the good thing about the 4141, in my opinion, is that you can play both possession based sides and direct style of play here. You just have to be a little bit smart about it. Uh, it's not the most perfect direct formation, but it will do the job and it is uh, good and useful on the counter as well. We'll get into that in just a second. First, if we just set up the team, so if we're going to say these are possession based, of course, the best thing to do is control. Uh, but you can use counter and standard as well for uh, these uh, formations and possession based sides. They're good mentalities. Um, of course, if you really need to press on, you should do it. You should um, uh, go into attacking or overload. But yeah, for possession based, control, standard, and counter are your best bets. Uh, so we'll be doing both of these con as control just for the sake of it. For the direct formation, we'll be playing on attacking. Uh, but again, you can also do countering for the direct style of play. Those two suit best. But again, really depends on how you feel the game out, how you feel the game's going. You can do contain, you can do defensive, you can even standard control. But I'm just saying what suits uh, this type of you know tactics or formations best. So the 4-3-3. Uh, possession based side. I like to keep things simple by playing lower tempos, shorter passing, being more expressive and roam from positions. But as I always say in my episodes, uh, it's all down to personal preferences. So you might want to get rid of uh, be more expressive if you like to be, you know, more of a uh, if you like to have a lot of tactical roles basically or tactical instructions. I like to keep it simple, you know, three to five max in, uh, in my instructions. And uh, you know this is the type of thing that I've settled to, I guess you could say. But really, if you want to play possession base, you could do a lot. So you can roam from positions, you can retain your possession, you can work the ball into box, even play out defense. That's all. That's all good options there. You can use offside trap because you're playing a very high line. You can even close down more to win the ball back. That of course helps with the high line and the offside trap. You can get stuck in to be a really aggressive, uh, you know, team who always want to win the ball back. But again, of course, be careful as it says here, uh, risk of fouls and discipline action. You know, like yellow cards, possibly red cards too. Another way is to set up your team to be a narrow shaped side. And the reason being is to keep your players as close as, as, as close to each other as possible. And that would help, of course, um, with keeping things ticking over, basically maintaining possession. Uh, you could even go the crazy length, I haven't mentioned it before, but you can do the prevent short goalkeeper distribution. And uh, that would mean that your forwards would be pressing opposition defence to try and stop them from being a possession based side themselves as well, basically. Um, things like look for overlap is a decent idea, a decent shout there too, but really, uh, you know, 
again up to you and your preferences but just for the sake of this we'll be sticking to my preferences because I will be showing you what I normally do um, I'm not going to show you here but we'll, you should be doing the same one for the 4-2-3-1 in terms for the direct play if you're playing attacking uh, again I like to keep it simple just higher tempo more direct run from positions and be more expressive but once more you can do way more instructions. So you can get rid of run from, from positions, first of all. Uh, you can hit in early crosses, you can pass into space, you can run at the defense, you can clear ball to flanks, uh, you can even play slightly deeper or even completely deeper and close down a little less uh, to keep your shape. You can stay on your feet as well once more to keep your shape and you can play wider to try and unlock defenses as you know as much as possible. Uh, now the instructions I'd say are key to direct play you don't necessarily need the defensive line to be deep or even to close down less you don't really need your shape your width to be uh, completely wide you can leave it on balance it's already a little bit naturally wider because you're playing directly um, I would say the key ones though to look out for is higher tempo more direct passing clearing the ball to flanks and probably running at the fence pass into space and hit early crosses are nice instructions as well as the be more expressive stay on the feet and all these other ones it's just complementary really um, but let's stick to what I was mentioning earlier again it's all about how you'd like to manage your team and your personal preferences so if you have a look at the 433 and what type we'll just have a look at who you, you, you should try and keep who you should get rid of and that type of thing and again it depends on the formation and tactic that you're using whether you're more direct or whether you're more possession based um, Handovic of course should be your first goalkeeper and uh, your first team goalkeeper key player he's a leading player for most of our sides so that's great that's perfect for you uh, your backup though you might want to reconsider he's only a decent player for most of our sides of course that's not too bad for a backup goalkeeper you're very rarely going to use him but uh, you never know sometimes goalkeepers get injured for months at a time so you might want to sell him and bring in someone uh, who's a youngster with potential for 1.2 million that's not bad um, and it's just something that you should consider. Ambrioso, a right back and a left back, but um, you know, I don't like my, my left sided left backs basically, I guess. Not left sided left backs, just my left backs to have uh, right foots because that always means they cut inside. And that's not too good. But again, he does hug the line, so I guess that's decent. But in terms of his ability, he is only a good player. Santon's probably the same, just a good player. And so is Nagatomo. So you've got a couple of right backs there that you. You know you don't really need in truth you've got too many right backs uh, some are capable I think all three actually are capable of playing as left backs my suggestion would be because he is capable of playing uh, you know with both his feet Nagantomo is your best bet to play in left back um, uh, but of course Christian and Sadi and more natural left back I guess you could say left footed and uh, he hugs the line as well he's actually got really good attributes for a wing back role um, so I guess that's your fullback position sorted. You do have four, so you've got the numbers there. The issue is that you don't have any standout fullbacks. Now the Football Manager 2017 has a serious lack of world class. I think it's realistic to be honest. There's no world class right backs or left backs. The fullbacks is an area where it's really tough to improve on, unless you've got tons of money. You can go out for players such as Alaba and whatnot. But um, in truth, uh, my suggestion would be is to sell one of the one of either fullback basically and try and get leading players because all of these are only considered good which is okay because they're fullbacks and you're not really it's hard to get better than good ability um, but if you can find someone with leading and you sell one of these uh, Ambrioso you know choose them according to whether you think they have some bad weaknesses um, or for example you don't really like some of the attributes maybe um, Santon's a good fullback though so I would say you could keep him. I think I think you've got a sort of strong set of fullbacks in truth it's just about ability their attributes are all good they're all good you know rounded players um, but you might want to try and improve them on ability maybe you could even sell them and bring in a youngster with potential who can eventually become a leading player there are those type of fullbacks it's just about trying to get a proven fullback okay we've talked about fullbacks for too long we've got only three center backs so again your two you're playing a dangerous game in terms of um, the uh, numbers game basically so you, you want to have a team of 22 a squad of 22 first squad 
of 22 players. We've got 22 here, which is perfect. Unfortunately, it looks like you're short in some areas and overstocked in other areas. Now, the reason why I say is you should have a first 11 of uh, high, you know, leading players for your division and then a, a backup 11 of youngsters with potential. I feel like that's the most balanced type of side. Otherwise, you can have a bunch of players com uh, complaining about their game time. And if you have, uh, you know, experienced, a if you have a first, exp uh, first eleven that's experienced and proven, and then a backup ex uh, eleven who are inexperienced but have potential, it's a perfect balance because they can tutor each other, they can compete with each other, and just sets up the side nicely. So if we got your centre backs here, uh, Marco Andrioli, I would say you are better off selling him. He's got problems with injuries, which means he's probably be out for most of the time. It's just not worth it considering his abilities. Only a decent player. That's not good. But your first choices are definitely Miranda, who's a perfect leading centre-back. Definitely keep him. Murillo is a player with potential, so he is a centre-back. Uh, he's 24, so he might not reach that potential, but he does. He could. He could do so. At least show some faith. And those two should be your perfect, um, you know, proven centre-backs. So I think you should sell Andrioli and try and bring in two centre-backs with potential. The problem is, of course, whether you have the money for all these type of changes. Uh, but again, you don't have to make any of these changes all in one go. It's just about long term and uh, managing your budget. I'm just telling you, you know, the advice. You've got 17 million, you could kind of do something there. But again, depends on who you're bringing in and who you're selling. Your centre midfielders, if we consider the 4-3-3 formation, then that would mean Mario's included. And that would mean you you meet the numbers game of six centre midfielders. Uh, Medal will be the perfect defensive midfielder and I'm guessing one of these central midfielders should be capable of playing as a defensive midfielder as well. So not to worry too much, uh, Kong Dogbia probably uh, is your is a good choice for defensive midfielder as well. Roberto from Atlanta, he will be joining permanently. So again, um, it would be nice to set him up to try and get your potential. Um, so yeah, I don't think you need to worry too much here. I think if we consider Medal, he is a leading player. His backup, if we consider Joffrey as your backup, uh, he is going to be a player with leading uh, ability as well. So you're sorted there. Benega, your, your midfield pretty much sorted. You know, you, you've got really good players there who are all leading. Uh, Brozovic as well, Benega. Roberto is going to be uh, joining you and he looks like he should have potential eventually to reach a leading player as well. And Geo Mario, of course, we've spoke about already a leading player as well. So if anything, your issue is that you have too many leading players in this. I know it sounds strange, um, but you do have too many leading players in your central midfielder position. And uh, it looks like they might argue with each other for game time. But again, it depends on their squad status. Some of them might not complain. Gary Meadows only considered rotation. Benega is a key player, so that's okay. Uh, Joffrey is rotation as well. So I think if you just balance the game time, you should be okay. And your midfield, uh, you know, you've got incredible midfield, so they might carry you. They might actually carry you um, uh, through your season. Now, uh, it looks like you're overstocked in the winger position. Uh, but not to worry, if you sell one of them, that would help you bring in the, uh, the centre-back that you needed just to meet the numbers. Um, but you do have some good options here. Antonio Candreva, of course, a very good leading player for most Serie A sides. A winger, uh, an inter Italian uh, international, as everyone knows him, of course. Very, very good player. Uh, a bit of an untraditional winger, I guess you could say, because he does cut inside onto his uh, left foot, even though he is right-footed, I think. Yeah, he is. Um, but yeah, definitely a good player. Your other left winger who should be a first teamer is Ivan Perisic. Perfect inside forward, leading without a doubt. That's good for you. You've got uh, Gabriel Barbosa, a youngster with a lot of potential and a wonder kid as well. You might want to consider playing him as a striker, but of course, um, he probably might get more game time on the right wing. He's a Brazilian international already. And uh, he's the perfect kind of potential player that you want as a backup to Candreva. Uh, Jonathan Biabiani, um, he struggles with injuries. He is a good player, so he is kind of a good backup. But you might be better off selling him because he's a winger on the right and bringing in a youngster with potential. But again, you've got that in Barbosa, so you, maybe you could sell Biabiani as he's already listed and bring in a centre-back for him. Edda will be a decent left winger uh, backup, basically. Uh, he is apparently capable of playing as a striker as well. Um, but yeah, he's joining permanently as well, so you might want to try and find a place from in the side. To be honest, I'm, don't, I'm not sure why he's joining permanently at the age of 29. Uh, maybe when he joins, you can try and sell him off. Um, 
you know, and get someone in with, with potential because you do have a first choice left midfielder in Perisic. But yeah, Edo does make a good backup for now and he is still on loan so you can't really get rid of him just yet. Uh, so not to worry. Your backup, Palacio, 34 years of age, uh, you might want to consider selling him. But again, you, might, you won't really get too much money. He does have high wages for someone his age and ability. Uh, but his contract does end in 2017, so you might want to just keep him literally just for the, this season. And once Edda comes in, maybe he can be a backup or you can even eventually move Gabriel Barbosa to the striker position. Especially if you're playing um, the 4-3-3 formation, then it would be perfect for you to play him as a, a backup because he would be the complete forward on support. So if you just consider how you should be playing your tactics... Uh, definitely you should be playing a complete forward on support eventually though uh, when you ease off the players in the striker position you know when players such as uh, uh, Icardi even though he's young when he eventually grows of age maybe or if you you know if he wants to leave for example or you sell him off or whatever uh, you want you should consider a false nine position it's the best a false nine role rather it's the best one for possession based sides uh, but yeah, for now, work on the complete forward on support. You've got Perisic as an inside forward on attack would be better. Yeah, he does have crossing ability though, so on support's not too bad. A winger on support there is a good option and you have to play a wing back on support there and a full back on attack over here. Now, the makeup of the centre back position depends on the, the players and of course, they're all capable of a central defender, so that's okay. And uh, the, I'll show you how you best, you know, how, how it's best to set up your um, midfield again my my preference is that you eventually move the winger into an inside forward as well uh, and for your midfield the perfect one would probably be an anchor man uh, ball winning midfielder on support and an advanced playmaker on attack here now whether you have the players to do is a different uh, you know story entirely you do have an advanced playmaker on attack so we'll leave that you have to check your defensive midfielders whether they can play that type of role my bet is that he's not completely ready for it now he's most useful as a ball winning midfielder so you might consider pushing him into central midfield but that would mean that you don't have players in defensive mid so I think Gary Medal best off as a defensive midfielder uh, just because of the makeup of the rest of your team uh, he should play on the defensive midfielder role as well he is capable as an anchor man but again probably best off as a defensive midfielder and uh, if we consider let's see uh, Brozovic he should be playing in the first team as well he's considered a box-to-box -box midfielder is his best role apparently um, but he's capable of playing a diff many different roles so it's up to you and your preferences um, our preferred ball winning midfielder on support he can do uh, but you wouldn't be using him to his best of his ability so I think we should turn change this to box-to-box -box midfielder and this to defensive midfielder as we said so as you can see this should be how your team would look uh, you could do something such as playing inside forward on support, changing a wing back to attack and playing the full back on support and a winger on attack. That's capable as well. But just bear in mind that your advanced playmaker on attack should follow whoever is on the attacking duty. So switch him around here if you're playing the winger on the attack and switch him back here if you're playing the inside forward on attack. Uh, the 4 2 3 one, I think is pretty much standard. Your midfield has to play uh, a more defensive this duo here have to play a little bit more defensive than in other formations just because they tend to be more caught out on the counter if you play more you know too expressively so if you play the complete forward on support here advanced playmaker on attack here you still got a winger here you still got an inside forward here uh, let's try and keep it the same as before so winger back on attack here as well and a full back on support and that would mean again your midfield should be central midfield on defend hit cover the wing back on attack a deep line playmaker on support and that way your team is more solid defensively uh, and has a good shape in terms of the 4141 you want to try and do um you want to try and play more direct so we're gonna have to try and see if a card you can play as a target man on attack my bet is he could do a decent job but won't be perfect so um, you might want to consider still playing him as a complete forward on support but again if you're trying to play direct the target man's always the best way target man on support would be the perfect role and it's actually done that there nope we want complete forward on support uh, you will have to retrain your players to be wingers and I think if you're going to push, push back Perisic here as a winger then play him on attack because he'll be better as is he is capable of course but he'll still naturally cut inside onto his right foot uh, fullback on support with here would do well and the fullback on attack on the other flank would be perfect 
and uh, the way you really want to set up your side is playing a deep line playmaker on defend here uh, you want to play a box-to-box -box midfielder here and the central midfielder on attack here and that would be perfect that would, should be what you're eventually building up to um, but with the team that you've got a defensive midfielder here and a box box midfielder and a central midfielder on attack don't worry most advanced playmakers on attack duties can play essential midfielders on attack um, but yeah if we play advanced playmaker in a direct type of team basically or formation rather then you would really uh, be struggling uh, advanced playmakers try and keep the ball they try and keep uh, you know possession basically and that's not what you're looking to do so central midfielder on attack is your best bet there is no other attacking duty in the midfield um, so for this 4-1-4-1 would be decent. Uh, but yeah, again, my suggestion is Inter are set up to be a more possession-based side. You can set up both these tactics if you are playing possession-based and uh, if you play the 4-3-3 whenever you feel like your team is being a bit too defensive, a bit too safe, you want to push on and get a winner, for example, you can switch to 4-2-3-1 midway um, with ease. I think if you're looking for a central midfielder on the defend, your Gary Medal, your Joffrey Con uh, Condobia, uh, is your best bet to play in the central midfielder on the f off in defense, defensive mid uh, you know defensive role basically duty rather, uh, and your um, I think players like Benega and Kongdobia would be comfortable playing as a deep line playmaker on support. Even Brozovic as well, deep line playmaker on support, he's comfortable there too. So you've got plenty of options. Uh, a lot to do with this Inter, Mil Mil Inter Milan side, and I think we'll have a look at the youngsters now and see who to keep your eye out on. Definitely they should, with the head of youth development, be uh, having a lot of youngsters coming in with potential and it looks like that's what it is here. So in terms of potential, uh, Federico De Marco is definitely a player you should keep an eye out on. He's probably, uh, when he comes back on loan from Emoli, he might be ready for Serie A. If he is, definitely stick him into the first team and uh, eventually, you know, he probably looks like a wonder kid really. doesn't say he's a wonder kid, but huge bags of potential. Another player to look out for is Djekovic uh, Gavioli in central midfielder, deep line playmaker. He would perfectly suit your uh, you know, 4-2-3-1 formation or even your 4-1-4-1. Poacher would be perfect if you eventually play in, um, a 4-4-2 for example with a target man and the poacher. Um, but Andrea Pinamonti definitely a player to look out for. Uh, and I think you can go on here up until just about Senna Miang. So you've got, um, what is this, about 10 players maybe? You've got nine players, nine players to look out for. If you, you know, also give them good experiences, good loans, uh, they can really help your first team eventually. You know, the central midfielder here, especially as well, um, can slot into your side seamlessly. Um, I think that will be all for today's episode. If you did enjoy it, then of course, please do hit the like button and subscribe for more daily Football Manager 2017 content. And as always, guys, thank you guys for watching.